Hello, Warner. Welcome to the studio. Glad to be here. Everybody knows you uh, from like YouTube automation, um, but my question to you is: Why did you all? Why did you start it with YouTube automation in the first place? So I did YouTube starting at the age like six, seven. Mm -hmm. Started playing RuneScape, and then I wanted to know how to make money in RuneScape. So I searched on the internet or Google or whatever it was back then as to how to make money in RuneScape. And then this video of YouTube popped up. I clicked on the video and it was just a guy making a tutorial on how you could make money. So I was like, all right, let me do that. And then from that point on, I was hooked because I was like, I just watched a video of someone making money. Now I'm making money myself. And then once I accumulated this currency called GP, mm -hmm. I actually went on to my classmates and I sold it on for like a one euro, two euros per million GP. And I started earning like 10 bucks, 20 bucks a week. And I was like, oh my God, that's so much money. I can buy so much candy with this stuff. And that really got me hooked onto the first edition of YouTube. And then it was like, I started making my own videos because there were too many kids asking for GP. So it was too much time behind the laptop. I wasn't going outside. And I was like, I need to solve that issue. And yeah, Pretty much thanks to that, got really rolled into YouTube, starting the age of six, seven. Then after that, started making my own Minecraft videos. Then after that, I had my, what I like to call my copyright period, mm -hmm. where I uploaded anything and everything, like Family Guy, Dragon Ball, mm -hmm. um, what is it, American Dad, I uploaded everything. And I was making a killing. Like I was making more money than I knew what to do with, for mm -hmm. sure at the age of like 16. Then when I turned 18, my parents told me, now you have to quit the copyright stuff because now you actually are liable for what you do. And I was like, oh shit, all right, let me build up a legitimate channel. And this is where a method called the unlisted method came into play, where you could buy views when the video was unlisted. Mm -hmm. And then it gets like 2,000 viewers, so you buy like 3,000. Well, when it hits 2,000 viewers, you, public, uh, you publicize the video. And immediately what YouTube did is YouTube put you all the way on top of the search engine and that just that did it for me the first day that i used that method on a legitimate channel i made 236 euros in my first day okay. and that got me hooked into youtube cash cow okay. from one channel you go into the next channel and at one point i have like six seven channels doing quite well mm -hmm. and that was when i went to about 30k ish a month wow. quite quickly yeah. it, it took me three months to go from zero to 30k a month so at, at that time you could just like you bought views and then YouTube would rank it higher. Yes, because you put it unlisted. Yeah. The moment you put it public, mm -hmm. YouTube already thought, oh my God, this guy just got 2000 views in one second. He must have such a good audience. Yeah. So what YouTube did is on every single keyword that I put into the text, it immediately put me on number one. So wow. there was no competition. I could go into a niche that has the heaviest competition, upload one video my way, and I was ranking number one. I got 4,000 viewers per hour but when I started. Just to be clear, it's not possible anymore, right? So no, it's not possible anymore. No, I don't recommend anyone to buy viewers. No, no, no. no okay. th th those, those times have passed. Yeah. Um, it isn't as good as it used to be anymore. Mm -hmm. There was still a method about a year and a half. It's called the playlist method, where if you have like compilation kind of channels that are right now, you can't really monetize them anymore. But back then, what you do is you send a lot of viewers to like the newest videos edit into a playlist instead of published. So whenever you add a video, new people would already go into the playlist because maybe of cards, of end cards, or a community post. And then you could do the same thing as the unlisted method, but then with legitimate viewers. Mm. And YouTube would be like, oh, so this view, the video is getting like 100 views per hour. All right, let me just put it like second or third. Yeah. So immediately you bypass all the competition and you just make a fuck ton of money. Okay, so... You, you you started your channel, like your first channel, and then uh, it went really well. Yeah. But I can imagine that you also had channels that went not so well or that went oh, yeah. down. Or how, how do you deal with like a channel going like the, the wrong way or not working at all? How do you deal with this? How do you like not give up? So I use a 33 video rule. If, if, it, if for myself a channel is not profitable after 33 videos, I quit the channel until it either becomes profitable and I pick it up again. Or if it doesn't, I just let the channel to die or I sell it off for a few bucks. Mm, okay. Like, I, I, I don't work on it because there's some niches that I also think, oh, this might be a very good niche. I had this one where it was like in the, in the private jets niche and I was like, oh, this could work really well. I had like 35 videos on it and I was like, 
it wasn't even monetized yet. And I was like, the videos are so good. We're getting like four and a half minutes watch time, five minute watch time on eight minute videos. I was like, we're doing really well in this niche, but it's just not hitting on. And still to this day, it still doesn't even have a thousand subscribers. Yeah. So I'm like, just throw the channel away. I haven't posted in 180 days. What's your re do you also like look what's the reason behind the the fact that it doesn't uh, have like more than like 2000 subscribers because you're you're saying that it's doing really well the videos are really good it got uh, like a, a long watch time yeah, what's the reason behind it so sometimes it just doesn't want to hit the algorithm or there isn't enough volume for it so this is where i always say you have to look at the volume and cpm so we're talking about private jets people that have a lot of money of people that are very interested in like the billionaire lifestyle so I know that would pay about $6 to $10, $10 per thousand views. But then on the other hand, I'm like, hey, listen, the volume is just not high enough. The biggest channel in the niche is doing like 20,000 viewers per video, but would be profitable, but not insanely profitable. Mm. So I was like, not interested in that one. Didn't work out. I'll just drop it. It was an ID. I've, I've spilled some money on it. So that's like 35 videos, like 20, 2,100 bucks yeah. that I spend on it. But... Sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, it's a risky take for like... So sometimes it might be a risky take, uh, but if you look at good volume versus CPM, like we have one gadget channel that right now is pulling like fifteen to 20,000 a month, okay. but only two videos a week. Yeah. But we're doing really high-end videos, so it's about 100 bucks per video. Oh, okay. So it's, it's pretty good. It's better than usual. Yeah, so you focus more on the quality than, rather than the, the quantity of the video. Yeah, so what I try to do, uh, what I also want to do in the future, I want to start a new channel where I use my own voice because I know how to speak to an audience. Mm. It's the same thing that I had before on my Instagram where I say, like, if you have a basketball channel, there's a huge difference between saying, please subscribe to my channel for daily NBA news, then, do I, then if I say, dunk that subscribe yeah, button, yeah, yeah. like that one example I gave yeah, at the yeah, meeting. Yeah. So that's, like, such a big difference in talking to an audience. Mm. And I think I can do that on any space, even on gadgets. You could say, like, uh, as an example for this microphone, you could talk about it that like, this is this microphone. Yeah. Or you could talk about it, this is like the ideal microphone for podcasting. Yeah. So it's the way of how you speak to your audience. So if you want to do podcasting, this is the one that I highly recommend. Mm. It makes it more obvious for you to buy it yeah. if you actually search for the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that gives me an edge to also get more affiliate commissions, get me more brand deals. Yeah, exactly. Because I can naturally implement it without showing even it's an ad placement. So and that's a, a big difference. It's a more creative way of like like telling or doing the voiceover rather than just saying like buy this microphone or this is a good microphone. You know exactly yeah. how to how to, how, how to speak back to an audience yeah. because if you don't address your audience as a person, they won't like you because there's no connection. Yeah. It's the same thing if I would consistently look at you and I don't look at the camera is because if I only look at the camera, I sound disinteresting towards you, yeah, like I don't true. care. But if I don't look at the camera, you don't get a shot that might be very good as an add-on of value mm. towards the podcast. Yeah. So there's a difference in the two. Yeah, that's true. Because there is the audience. So the people who are like watching, they're over there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the audience and that's the person. Yeah. So you need to have a look in between like, okay, listen, if this is important for the audience, you look towards the camera. And if this is important towards the conversation, yeah. you look at the person. Mm. So you're having a lot of channels, um, but where do you get your inspiration from? Like which, like what websites do you use? Like, do you get your inspiration from other YouTube channels, Instagram, Twitter? So, so, so my best thing is always to be still a little bit of a creative thinker mm -hmm. has gone away slowly because I have people in place doing that for me, but mostly I look at like big channels that are performing really well and see what kind of knockoffs can I make? As an example, um, and I'll say this blunt out here because I said I wanted to do a cash card channel in this niche myself, but because of the time that I have to spend and the surgery that I'm getting next month, mm. I won't be able to. But like two of the best things you could do, you right now you have hoop flicks and you have kick flicks. Yeah. It's a soccer channel and an NBA channel. But the first person to do that with tennis, congratulations, you can make 100K plus. Yeah. That's one. The second one, if you do literally the same thing for golf, yeah. Golf is insanely high paid. There's good ads on it. Um, but it would be a little bit less viewers, but it would be a lot more revenue. Mm -hmm. But if you get viral components, you can still do 60 60K, maybe 100K a month. So is this your plan to make... make no, no. I, I wanted to do this. I said this to a few people that I wanted to start these channels. But the thing is, with now the 
coaching business actually growing a lot. Yeah. And I've done YouTube for over six years. I've had enough profitable channels. I'm yeah. still pulling, like last month was 75K. Yeah. So I'm still pulling in enough. So there's no point in me to go into every profitable niche because I always say for the people that are inside of my program, I don't want to hide anything. Yeah. So I feel like if I would start secret channels in niches that I know that would perform really well, yeah. I know one or two students are missing out on that opportunity mm. as well. Yeah. Um, so still in the future, I want to do it. But now I first got the surgery on my tonsils yeah. uh, next month. So maybe after January, I will start the channel. Hmm. What I find then, it may be in a profitable niche. All right. So maybe for the people who are watching this video now, looking for a niche, they can maybe go for like tennis or golf yeah they could they could tennis golf you, you could do almost any sport as long as it has enough volume yeah but be careful with copyrighted content just make sure it's fair use and you talk to your audience and for sure with these kind of channels mm -hmm. invest more into a voice actor so instead of your video being like 60 dollars, probably spend about 100 120 dollars by getting yeah. an actual really good person that can speak to an audience that also knows that certain field so if someone is addicted to golf and as voice acting, you have found the right person. Because yeah, yeah. if you're going to hire a random person, I could not even call one golf player right now out of the top of my head. So I'm not the right person to do that audio. Yeah. But if someone is, then I'd say go for it. Yeah. He's more like connected with golf. So if he speaks about it, it's more like more engaging and, 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 and he speaks with like more knowledge about the, the exactly stuff. yeah because mm. it's the same with hooflix if you say please subscribe or dunk the subscribe button yeah. it's the language you're, sp you're talking like maybe you could say like potting the golf ball yeah. uh of putting the subscribe button you see yeah. like the subscribe button going into the hole yeah. and then say like i don't know like the mario thing like congratulations yeah, 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 yeah. uh hole in one <laughs> like the moment you hit the subscribe button but that'd be so fun yeah so the first person isn't doing that on like every single video it'd be it, it would become like a meme like a joke yeah, exactly. and then once it becomes a joke people are obligated to subscribe because people like, are like, ah, okay. okay, it's funny, so let's subscribe. Now yeah. I'm actually going to subscribe and that's mm -hmm. the difference in the two of them. All right. So I, I think that's really the power point of it. Yeah, so I can imagine that you, like, you have a lot of people like working for you now, but you also, you still work a lot. You're having the course, you're still having your channels. Uh, and in the beginning, you didn't have all those people working for you. So yeah. how do you manage to, when you have such, uh, like a lot of workload, how do you manage to relax like, how do you take time off and how do you, like... I take massages. <laughs> massages? <laughs> I, yeah. ju I just go th to therapy here in Bali and I'll just enjoy my time there for like yeah. an hour, hour and a half. I'll get rested quite well. Yeah. They're really good. Uh, and, and in general, if I want to take a day off, I just take a day off. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have the obligation to tell anyone to do yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. So that, that's, the, that's the good point about YouTube Automation. It's like, once it runs, it runs itself. Yeah. And uh, right now we're at the stage where we have at least 40 plus people working on the YouTube business. Yeah. And that, that, that takes a lot of time to build, but then you go to more of a system build of a company build, then rather building YouTube channels, you're working on these systems that are like really there in order to scale up. So like mm. you have certain workloads. So whenever someone completes a script, it automatically sends a message into the Slack group. Hey, listen to that person, to the voice actor of that channel. Like, hey, listen, now it's your time to go over the script. Please read the script first, it's correct if it's good. So the reason why we do that and the reason why we pay the voice uh, actor extra is because he will also once again go over that script and make it comfortable for him to read. Yeah. So it's a little bit higher standards. Yeah. When he has done it, he'll mark it as like completed yeah, yeah. and then the editor gets the matches like hey listen the audio file has been completed yeah. please start working on the video as soon as possible and then it gives a deadline it's like hey listen this video needs to be done by saturday hmm. uh, and then there's like depending on what you do you like you can take two days off i'm fine with that but then maybe the other day you have to work till 3 a.m to make sure the yeah, video yeah. is finished okay. i don't care i don't do work times yeah. we have an office where it's like nine to five works nice but i'm also still like sometimes youtube just has that thing where you need to be there even outside of work times yeah. so sometimes i require that and if people want to take a day off that's fine mm. but then make sure the day after that you produce more work yeah exactly but how did you like personally did this in the beginning when you started have you, had you ever had the experience that you overwork yourself oh you? yeah a lot of times so uh the, t the the peak point where i had this was when i was running my minecraft channels yeah. and i started doing this um in real life channels so I did like the Spider-Man versus Elsa and uh, oh, like yeah, the, yeah, those, yeah. those kids videos. Did really well, I made like 30K in a month that I didn't go to school because yeah. I was making the videos and I was like, I'm making so much bank, fuck school. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't go, I skipped like two weeks. 
Um, I, I actually did this with a friend in Australia. Okay. So I was already in Australia and mm. went so well that I just decided to delay my flight. Yeah. It's like, oh, sorry, my flight got canceled. I couldn't go to school. Yeah. It's like, when is the next flight? I'm like, I don't have that much money. So probably like next week, mm. pure lie. Yeah. <laughs> I had the money to go, but yeah. I, I was making, so I was making like 1K a day. So I was like, if I could go, I, if I could stay here for an extra seven days, yeah. I'll make an extra seven grand. So yeah. it's like, I'll you stay could, as long as possible. You could be going possible. like back and forth with all the money you were making. Yeah, months. exactly. Yeah. So, so I was like, fuck that. I, I'm just doing it that way. Yeah. But um, no, at that point, it was really worked like loaded in work. I was like, didn't like it anymore. It was too much because you had to make the videos and you had to be entertaining. Then you have to edit the sound effects on it. And I was doing everything self on like a laptop. And then you also make like the top five Minecraft videos that really not even being dishonest. Like it takes a lot of time, mm. even if it's compilation videos, if you want to make them properly yeah. and good and engaging with like questions in between yeah. and animations. It still takes about an hour and a half, two hours, sometimes three hours to make such a video. Yeah. And yeah, no, if you do that, combining with actually making proper videos, what takes like eight hours a piece. Yeah. I was working 11 hours, 12 hours a day, every single day. And then after that, we still did like a workout. So add another two hours on top yeah. of that. So you're busy for 14 hours a day. So you sleep eight hours a day. You don't have free time. Like you, you eat when you edit. You did all the editing yourself? Yeah, I did all the editing myself. Okay. I always worked in Sony Vegas, like yeah. Sony Vegas Pro 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, now I now I luckily enough don't have to edit my own videos anymore. Oh, okay. I, I'm past that stage. <laughs> yeah. All right. But so have you ever thought about, because you worked so many hours back then, you're editing yourself, also did a workout and then sleep and then do it all again, like every day. Yeah. Have you ever thought about like when it was like too much about quitting about, okay, I'm just going to. Oh yeah, I, I still have that often. I always uh, annoy my uh, chief marketing operator with it. I'm like, hey, listen, sometimes I just want to sell off the company and I'll be like, I'll pocket like a million, two, three million. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, it's such a cash cow baby where yeah. I literally don't have to do anything anymore if I want to. Yeah. Maybe work one hour a week on it, but then it would stagnate. Like it would go, just go down slowly. Yeah. But then when I see it going down, when I went like from 75 to 55, it was the first time in over 18 months i went below 60k a month yeah i was like fuck what's going on yeah. like i still have that expense so it's like 55 plus 20k in costs yeah so it would be like 35k a month and i was like fuck yeah. what's going on so i started working again and now it's 75 and next month will be over 100 again yeah um just starting to implement the updates and make it perfect and see and listen what kind of content are we getting versus how much do we actually need yeah. so we're gonna kick two people out Unfortunately, I don't like kicking people out, yeah. never. But um, sometimes it's necessary to open up a little bit more budget to try new things. Mm -hmm. So that, that's doing really well. Yeah, in the beginning when you, you first, you started your first channel. Yeah. What was your, because you didn't have the knowledge you have now, but what was your motivation to start this channel? I mean, you did YouTube uh, for some years, RuneScape videos and stuff. Yeah. But what was your motivation to start like with YouTube automation? So it was because I couldn't do the copyright stuff anymore. Okay. But because of that, I was like, how do I make legitimate channels? And I already did all this research on YouTube. And then I was like, okay, now I've done this research. How do I make the best videos out of it? And then it's just a learning curve. I had to learn the hard way. Yeah. Um, I was lucky that my content still catched on very quickly with these methods. But besides that, my videos weren't really perfect. I was still that clickbait douchebag yeah. that also had like uh, one of the biggest creators back then was called Master Saint. Okay. And he has over three and a half million subscribers. He did like the worst clickbait videos ever with like Pokemon Go. Yeah. And I did the same thing. And my channel that did really, really, really well in that time. Mm. We did about 600,000 views per video. per video. And then some of them get like two, three, four million. Yeah. But that was when I was doing really well with my own automation channels. Okay. And I was like... Good money. That was, yeah. I, I remember like 26,000 for the first month that really popped up. With that channel? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's another big hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was really fun. For sure, because I also liked the game, so I knew what I was mm -hmm. talking about. And I was doing the own my own voice acting on top of it. Mm -hmm. So it were my own videos, completely yeah. myself. But just people didn't know I was behind it. I yeah. just did the walking, did the talking. Mm. And I went to places. So it was interesting for the viewer. And... 
because now a lot of people are like making videos for you now and yeah. i bet you don't do you see all those videos yourself no you're taking all those no no i do i do a weekly checkup where yeah. i'm just subscribed to my own videos like my own channels yeah and i just click on them and i say like hey listen this thumbnail isn't good enough compared yeah. to what the video is saying you need to change this you need to change that yeah. and just consistent updates and yes if i would run everything myself first of all i couldn't handle it with the amount of channels i run. But then at the same time, if I would have won, if I would be able to do it, yeah. we would do it two, three, four times the numbers that we're doing now. Okay. But I, I just don't have the time anymore. No, no, no. It's also not worth it because I'm, I'm financially free. I'm set. Yeah. I, I don't need any more money than I do right now. Mm -hmm. So right now, my only thing is that I want to give back to people. Yeah. I want to give back to the audience, to yeah. people who are interested in what I'm doing and people who are actually have also the funds able to really set up a good channel. Because those are the most fun. If I know someone has a lot of opportunity, I'm very interested and I'm I'm looking more accurate on their channels than I do on my own channels. Because yeah. I'm like, if you just hit one video viral, yeah. you're just gonna blow up. Yeah. And I, I'm like, if I know that for a certain fact, I'm just waiting for it to happen. And then we have one person right now that was like, within 24 hours, she got like a quarter million views wow. on her new video. And it's like her fourth video. Yeah. And I'm like, then I get excited. I'm like, yeah. okay, perfect. Now we need to do this, 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 this. This is this is the optimization. Mm. What did the artist like? What did the comments say? Did you reply back? Uh, did you build that initial uh, fan base? Because mm. your first viewers in the first four hours are the most important. Yeah. So the moment that she posts the videos, she starts commenting on them, and she says like on the end of the video, like, hey, listen, if you if you leave a nice comment, I'll reply within the next 24 hours. You build that initial fan base for sure in the beginning. Mm -hmm. and you get so many viewers. So now even she has. She just got monetized. She just got like 2,000 subscribers now. Wow. So within four, how, within how it, long? Uh, so this is in total of, I think, eight or 12 days, depending wow. on how many days we leave in between us. She has four videos on the channel. Yeah, that's it's, it. It's not normal, right? No. No, but that's because she made the video perfect. Yeah. And the title and the thumbnail, everything of the video was perfect. Yeah. And that's the thing that I always try to do is like, I try to look after the people. And I'm like, if you have your first video, send it to me. Yeah. And I'll make like a loom video or, or just quickly reply, yeah. like, hey, listen, this is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Like you're not engaging with the audience. Yeah. And then it's just those small little updates. That's the difference between a channel that does like 5K a month or maybe 3K a month. And the difference between such a channel that if we set it up correctly right now, yeah. it'll probably do 40 to 60K a month. Yeah. So she was just making the videos, sending them to you. Then you were giving the tips and then she yeah. implemented the tips and then she grew quicker and quicker because of this. Yeah, but well, the thing what we do is I like to say like a lot of people buy a program, mm -hmm. but the thing is the program doesn't look after the creator. It's like you buy a program and then it's like, oh yeah, you just deal with it. Yeah. And I'm like, no, fuck that. The first video that you publish, I want it to be perfect. Yeah. So whenever you get the video of one of our content creation teams, send it back to me. Yeah. I'll give you all the feedback that I have. Then you go back to the content creation team. Yeah. They redo it or they edit the parts that need to be updated and need yeah. to be perfect until I think this video has a chance to blow up. Yeah. That's my part where I help with. After that, you just have to look back at the first video because yeah. I'm still like, I teach you all the basics. I teach you all the advanced stuff. I yeah. teach you everything. <coughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach you everything, but the end part is still you have to learn it. Yeah, yeah. If you don't learn it yourself, I'll help you with your first video. You yeah. can just look back after that video yeah. and be like, okay, listen, what does this video know wrong from the first video that I did with Warner? Yeah. You optimize it. Now maybe the second video you send it to me and I'm like, okay, good video. Mm. Or I say, hey, listen, go back to the first video, yeah. redo it, like make it, make it the best video ever. Yeah. And it's just small changes. I even had like a one-on-one -on -one client and we're like, okay, we're pretty much ready. And then he uploaded the video thinking he did a perfect job. And then it's like, the title is not yet perfect. Yeah. Or like this thumbnail doesn't have this little secret ingredient to it. Yeah. Where it's like, we should have added a little blur to a little text yeah. where it would pop out more. And it's like three layers. And I was like, that's, that's the perfect thumbnail. That's the perfect video. So this video, I really believe it could blow up. Yeah. And then they have the opportunity to literally blow up within days sometimes. So you, you look at like the video, how it's edited, you look at the voiceover, the title, and the yeah. thumbnail. But what what's, um, would be a good tip for like a good title? How do you like write a good title? Make, make it scarce. Make it like if you don't click, you miss out. Yeah. So it's like with Mr. Beast, it's like it, when he puts his hand out like this and it's like, um, oh, I left this man alone in his home for 100 days. Yeah. Like that's the first thing he also says in his video. It's very quick paced. And then it slows down again. So you regain that attention span. Yeah. 
So if I start to talk really quickly and very engaging, but now I'm just going to really give you the advice, then now this is the point where yeah. you, really your attention comes to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like those small little changes that you make to a video, decide if it blows up or it doesn't. So that's also, you do this with the video and you do this with the title. So but Yeah, so if we do the back, back to the title indeed, yeah. it's like, um, let's say you say, um, pff, what would be a good title for a video? Just name any sort of video, anything. A, a cooking video. A cooking video, okay. So let's say you have a cooking video, the top 10 uh, best cooking recipes. But now you can also say, instead of top 10 best cooking recipes, you could say top 10 most delicious cooking recipes for your family. Yeah. There's two points in this. First, we say top 10 most beautiful. Yeah. Like, it's really, really good. So we add, like, an extra on. Yeah. And then we say for your family. Yeah. So it's like it talks to yeah. families. It talks to an audience. So if a mom is watching that and the title says for your family, she's like, oh, yeah, I want to make this recipe yeah. for my family. So it triggers, also triggers emotion. Exactly. So, so it triggers an emotion. And it's like, it's beautiful. It's like the, the top 10 most delicious recipes for Christmas. Yeah. So you target a really specific audience where you could have like your background decorated in Christmas stuff. Yeah. It could make it look so nice that people are like, oh my God, I'm so curious what she's going to make. Yeah, and yeah. then you go a little bit fast bits in the beginning and you slow down when you actually go to the recipe and you just show it, you make a few nice scenes. I don't know if all I say, for all I care, you just have a very nice scene where you just cut the avocado, yeah, yeah. make a nice little recipe. Um, and, and you just pump the chicken full with the, with the Christmas delicious yeah, yeah. Uh, food and you make something good out of it. So right. that's what I would say is like the best thing. So title first, thumbnail second, and then your average view duration third. Because mm -hmm. people read a lot. They read the title, they read the thumbnail. Yeah. Technically speaking, they first look at the thumbnail yeah. and then they look at the title. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's the reason why I always say like, if you upload your thumbnail, make sure you put your hand over the title yeah. so your thumbnail should already be explaining what your title is going to be yeah if it's not it's not a good title or it's not a good thumbnail you could do it both ways yeah so that's the big difference in the two of them mm. and that's really the easiest piece where i say like would you click on it yourself yes or no yeah or compare it to someone else pick your thumbnail pick another thumbnail just go to your homepage, add it on top of it send it to friends and family and be like which one would you click on yeah and if it's like not yours yeah you're not doing something good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it is yours, how can you make it better? Yeah. But you're already off, off to a good start. Yeah. You can learn a lot by looking at other, like, good, like, working cash card channels and doing this trick, right? Yeah, yeah, same. So, at, uh, so let's say you have uh, an old channel niche. Don't go into it. It's like the Tesla niche. So if you have that, put, like, all kind of Tesla thumbnails on top of your homepage on your web browser yeah. and then just add yours in. Yeah. Is yours more interesting? Is your title more interesting? If yes, would you click on it? If no, yeah. what can you do to make it better? Yeah. And that's, that's where the difference comes in. It's really, people think it's just all getting a content creation team and uploading the videos. Yeah. But like, if you look at the smaller details and you really start to learn about the field, that's where the big money is. And that's why I call it a cash cow or cash grab. It's like just getting as much money right now as possible yeah. from whatever is allowed on YouTube. Just get it. Because yeah. if you can make 50K a month within now and three months, what is possible? Mm -hmm. I just don't say it happens all the time. You need to have perfect videos and you don't need to go into a niche that everyone else is going in. Yeah. As an example, Formula One, we're like, okay, we saw one channel. No, there were two channels that were blowing up. Um, and I was like, this is the most interesting stuff. Yeah. So at this point, I was like, okay, now you can go into it. Problem is 16, 17 people immediately go into that niche. Yeah. And it's like, now there's literally no point anymore. And we have a few channels that blow up. The, the one guy was sitting at the meeting as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he, was, he, yeah. he did like 6K a month with the yeah. Formula One channel. So that was really good. Wow. Yeah, I, I, he, he told me that he, he was not even doing the work. He, he was No, he, he gives a guy 15% and yeah, he does all exactly. the work. Yeah, He was like, I'm doing nothing right now. I just yeah. started this But his channel went downhill a lot. So I was okay. like, you have to pick it up. You have to reread everything very well. Yeah. Uh, and I was like... Either that or your channel is going to die out. But if you do it well, you, you go back up, to, back up to like 500, 600 a day. But a Formula One is not like an evergreen channel, right? It's not like... Formula One is only getting more popular. I wouldn't say it's not evergreen. Evergreen is like, how long is evergreen? Is yeah. evergreen a year, two years, five yeah. years? Mm. So Formula One is right now getting more popular. Over the last five years, it still has been evergreen. Yeah. And probably within the next five years, it will still be. Yeah. So I call it evergreen. You could base your career off having a very proper formula one channel yeah you could the thing is will it last forever probably not yeah. but will it last for the next five ten years probably yeah. yes 
there's some good brand deals in it you'll make at least enough money to be able to work for yourself yeah mm. is um like a tip for like looking for a niche if you go to google trends and look for like a trend that's like booming now and make like a channel from that trend is that a, is that a good idea to do Yes and no. Um, so what I do, this is where a little bit is a gray area, is if it's like these kind of channels. As an example, you had the Amber Heard versus, what's his Johnny name? Depp. Johnny Depp yeah. uh, court case. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I bought a monetization enabled channel and I just started spam uploading that, that court case. Yeah. We made about 22K in about two and a half weeks. Wow. From a channel that had like only weird videos where a girl was dancing yeah. and it was just a monetized channel and we just started pushing out those videos okay. <laughs> with very clickbait thumbnails and t titles and we knew this channel just could be terminated or anything could happen like i didn't care yeah i just wanted to get as much content out there so we were doing i think five six videos a day yeah but every video like we posted and it just like the analytics just go up yeah. and then eventually it hits like a thousand viewers per hour mm. so we had like over a hundred thousand viewers per hour on this channel wow and then, yeah, blew up. The biggest day was like 6K in a day. But that's like, it's short term, right? Because it's short term because it already died out. I already sold the channel. Some guy wanted to buy it for, it wasn't a lot. It was like 25K. And okay. I was like, it's still fine. As long as I just get the revenue from yeah. uh, what I made. And he got onto it. And I think, I think he had a return. I'm not sure. I haven't spoken to the guy anymore. But he's uploading other videos now, right? No, <laughs> there's nothing happens with the channel anymore. He oh. just wanted to buy the cash flow. Oh, okay. And it, nothing, nothing happens. There has been like like three, four more videos. Yeah. Uh, but I, th those were created by our team. Okay. So he didn't. He literally didn't do anything with it. No, he just bought it. Yeah, it's such a waste. <laughs> such a waste. Like if, if if he would have posted, he would probably have gotten like another thirty, forty k. Yeah. But the thing is, it could have also. I don't know. I said like I'm not responsible for demonetization or anything. Mm -hmm. Could also just have been like the next day, de like demonetization happened and he lost all his money. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I don't speak to the guys. Just gone through email. Yeah. So that's interesting. Have you ever had a channel that like you you told me about the channel that went down, right? Yeah, yeah. Had a How so so I had one really big channel, oddly satisfying videos. Yeah. Where we produce and make our own videos. So be very careful with that. Is if you do not produce or make your own videos, YouTube won't allow monetization. But last year it was a little bit easier, and we had like a system, uh, what's called like a managed CMS. So we could put the channel in there and it would still be monetized and it wouldn't get demonetized that easily. Eventually it did. And when it got demonetized, it just dropped dead to the ground. Uh, we went doing like 500K viewers a day. It made 600,000 in 2021. Yeah. And like the best days were like four or 5K a day. The yeah. worst days were like 1,500 a day. So it's like stupid. The worst money. days. The worst days were like 1,500 a day. Yeah. Like wow. the CPM was still really good because we uploaded long videos. And I'm just saying that the, the channel name out here, so you can just search it up if you want. Uh, we changed it. We changed the channel name, but it didn't catch on. We're just uploading slime videos that we produce. Mm but nothing has happened and got declined for monetization again, even if we produce our own videos. Because yeah. they say Slime Videos doesn't give additional value to YouTube. Nope, you can forget about it, not being monetized. What would you say to, like, when somebody starts a channel, first channel, and it, it blows up, it's doing really well, and then it also goes down like, the, like mm. your channel, but yeah. that's your only channel. How would you, do you Starts. have any tips to, like, deal with, this happening at least have a backup at the moment you start making five six k a month yeah immediately start working on your second channel okay because for 99 percent of people watching this you probably don't live in dubai you probably pay taxes yeah. so if you invest into a new channel and you start building that up and you have more costs you pay less taxes yeah. so either you're going to give it to the government or you're going to produce more cash flow yeah. to the point where you can maybe leave your government and go to uh, dubai or another tax area where you yeah. pay like zero percent and then you can start cashing out. Yeah. Like this is like, I only invested back into my company. I never really took any profits, mm -hmm. like really small, like only the necessary salary that I had in the Netherlands, plus a little bit extra for like a few holidays that I had. Mm -hmm. But that's it. I never took, I, I, I think I didn't ever took out more than 30K for my personal stuff, yeah. never. Everything was business related. But right now I'm in this area where I have enough cash flow mm. and I live in Dubai. So yeah. if I get 70K profit in a month or 100K profit, uh, in a month, I can just go ahead and invest this in real estate in Bali or um, yeah. wherever I want. Yeah. It just takes me a few months and I can buy another home and I can buy another home. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm just waiting. I'm just sitting on cash. I'm just waiting for the economy to just sink down yeah. and start buying as much as I can. Yeah. I've got a lot of saves up for that so I can get like a huge loan 
a few million dollars and I'll just buy everything I can. Yeah. So keep on investing, even if, so when you're starting your first channel, you make five, six K, you yeah. start another one or you just you start keep another one. investing yeah, your you money you keep into it, you keep channel investing. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, right. keep doing that. Make sure you're safe. Make sure you have at least like a piggy bank. Make sure you have like 10K on the back. Yeah. Like, I don't know if the electricity prices go up even more, like yeah. at least have some money setting uh, behind uh, closed doors. Just make sure you have that saved up. I, I think no one needs really more than 10K. doesn't matter what breaks. If, you, if your laptop breaks or lamp breaks or camera breaks, you can yeah. just buy a new one. Yeah. Like it doesn't affect you. Mm. But then after that, I'd say reinvest everything. It's also the same thing with the Netherlands. It's like the tax rule where the first 9,700 9, is like tax-free. Like just use that money for yourself. Yeah. Because you don't pay taxes over it. Yeah. And then everything else, just reinvest back into your company as much as you can. Yeah. Until the point you're like, okay, I want to travel the world. I want to move stuff. I want to have a little bit more personal money. Go to Dubai. Yeah. And then indeed start as many channels as possible. I had nine channels when I moved out from the Netherlands to Dubai. Okay. Nine or ten, something like that. And I was doing really well at that point. At that point, I was doing 120 to 150k a month from yeah. YouTube alone. So I was like, I have to go. Yeah. And you're, you say, how did you... Because at one point you're starting to make like a lot of lot of money, yeah. like more money than most people would make, like especially when you with your uh, age. Yeah. Um, how did you delve with like making a lot of money? Because I can imagine if you get like thirty, forty, fifty k a month. Oh, I really don't care. It's it's the funny part. Is in the beginning it's really cool. So I was actually depressed yeah. when I had my Tesla, my Audi R8, and yeah. I had my apartment. Yeah. Like I had everything possibly. But I was just very unhappy. Yeah. And I was like, I have to solve that. I want to travel. And then with your salary in the Netherlands, without, after all the taxes, I still couldn't travel the way that I want to travel. And I was like, that's just a waste of money. So I wanted to find a solution. And then the pandemic came. And the Netherlands was like, you have an evening clock. You are not allowed to go outside anymore. Yeah. So I was like, fuck that. I'm moving out. So I went to Dubai. The only thing you need to do there was wear a mask. Yeah. It's like, fuck that. But yeah, still do it somewhere. And then it's like, you have to put up your mask and you put your mask up again. And I was like... Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll do that, but I won't do more than that. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I'm like, that's the only thing I have to do. Otherwise, you pay like 800 bucks fine. Yeah. In Dubai, it was like crazy expensive. And then I went to Bali, and here there were like zero rules. Yeah. Like nothing. No rules at all. Yeah. No, nothing. <laughs> and even if you didn't wear a mask, you pay a guy five euros. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you go. Yeah. Like it does didn't matter. It's all fine. <laughs> yeah, at one point I even literally had like a pack of bintang beer oh, yeah. in my scooter. Yeah. So whenever I got like pulled over, yeah. I literally just opened my trunk, uh, like my trunk, and I was like, "All right, hey, I have a bintang," and they're like, "All right, you're good to go." To to the police. Yeah, to the police. Wow, I yeah. literally had bintang in my scooter, <laughs> so I could give it to the police because I w I knew that if I would go to like Sam Yaku South, yeah. I would get pulled over by the police. Yeah. And I would have to pay a fine, and if I could just give bin tongue, they're happy. They're happy with they, 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 they didn't care, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> it yeah. makes no sense. It's funny, the rules are so different from, from the Netherlands, from like Western... Uh, yes, it's, everything is different here. Mm. But I like it that way. Yeah. I like both sides. Yeah, I can imagine. But I like Dubai the, Dubai the most. I, I like living here, but then in Dubai I feel secure, I feel safe. Yeah. I just know everything is very well done. We're in Bali, you still have food poisoning. The hospitals are okay, but they're not great. Yeah. Um, but for someone that has a lot of stomach issues, it's a big deal. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I just have to live in both in between. Mm. So I literally live Netherlands, Bali, and Dubai. Yeah. And that's literally what I, where I live at. And then for events, I go to America. I'm in America for what, like a month out of the year. Yeah. And the Netherlands, I'm about two, three months a year. Bali, almost five, six. Yeah. And then Dubai, another two something like that switching between yeah places. switching between all the places hmm. i like it that way it's travel it resets me it's like okay now in a new environment a new place yeah and you start knowing the places like i come in bali and everything is done for me like my office is being made uh, everything will be set up i have my cleaning lady i have yeah. my chauffeur pick up i just have to send my flight and i'll be picked up yeah so there's nothing really that i have to do and that goes for all my locations mm -hmm. so the moment i hit ground is the moment i feel home again yeah because I just know there's people waiting for me and I'll have people around me. I'll never be alone. Yeah. Well, the, when you, you started your channel, because I can imagine for people who want to start, uh, want to start with YouTube automation and they like maybe look up to you or like to other people in the space, they're like living, living the life. Um, but you know, you're, you're here, like you're at the start and you want to go like somewhere, um, like to also maybe travel, live in Dubai, have a house here, have a house there. Um, 
what would you like recommend to those people that want to like start with YouTube automation? Um, what are your like three main tips where you need to focus on when you like starting? Okay, three main tips. Like I said at the beginning of this podcast as well, is first look at your CTR, your thumbnails. Get really, really, really good at making high quality thumbnails. I don't care if you spend five bucks, 50 bucks or 100 bucks on a thumbnail, your thumbnail needs to be perfect. That's one. Your second thing that you're gonna look at is your title. Like we explained before, with the cooking part is like most beautiful and then maybe for your family, for Christmas, make it have like one or two special points. That's the second thing. The third thing is really grab the attention. And this is something you have to master is your audience retention, your AVD, average view duration. Once you grab that attention, it's literally the most powerful thing ever. If you're gonna keep people their attention for six, seven, eight minutes, and you're gonna have like a 10, 15% click-through rate, yeah. congratulations, you're making bank. Yeah. Like if you do that really well and you can replicate that, you're solid, you're, yeah. you're making millions. It's like the rebound channel, like the basketball channel. Yeah. They're doing like 40, 60 million views a month. Even if that's a four CPM, that's 160K to 200K a month. One channel, one yeah. proper setup channel. They have three people full-time uh, working for them and that's it. Yeah. It's a team of three and they're full-time. I met them in uh, LA actually, yeah. in uh, Los Angeles. Very nice guy. So uh, yeah, he does it very, very well. It's like a Kesco channel, but it's like so professional. It's insane. What would you say to, because personally, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist, so I want to have everything like perfect, and therefore I sp sometimes spend a lot of time working on something that I could just finish in maybe 10 minutes, but I spend two or three hours because I want to have it like perfect. Mm -hmm. are, like, are you like a perfectionist yourself, or how do you, like, do you have any tips for people who want to have like everything perfect? Is that like necessary to have everything like no, perfect? No, they're just dark shit channels on YouTube and <laughs> yeah. making bank yeah. uh, by straight up stealing content as well. But it, no, it's, it's like you have to make it good. Like my goal is to make it as perfect as possible as soon as possible. Because the, pro the problem with all these programs out there, in my personal opinion, is that they teach you on how to do it, but they don't teach you on what to avoid and what to actually do. Yeah. And there's a big difference in the two of them because you could start a channel and upload 30 videos, but then come to me and be like, yes, I'm already doing such a good job. Uh, maybe you're monetized, maybe you're doing like 600 a month. And I'm like, yes, but all oh, your thumbnails are dog shit. Yeah. Like it could be so much better compared to your competition. I'll mm. put up a list and you'll do like the thumbnail check with the rest of the competition. Yeah. It's like, okay, now you go to the next level. Now you go from 600 to 6,000 yeah. just by adding those small changes. So I'm like, very well, make sure, it doesn't have to be perfect at the first video, just, but make sure it's a learning curve. Yeah. After 30 videos, you should be posting almost perfect videos. Yeah. But if you start with that first perfect video, then yeah, you yeah. save those 30 videos in between. Yeah, true. And that's what I see with a lot of people that come from other programs and they come to me and like, I want to fix that issue. And then yeah. it's like, all right, let's fix the issue. We'll do a Loom video. Give me the channel a URL. We'll go over it. Yeah. And I'll pinpoint everything. I'll list that into like the pin post. And it's like, that's the video. Go back to it if you have to learn it. It's like you get a little bit of personal time and that's, I'm like, that, that's also the, prog the problem with other programs. Like you pay a thousand dollars and you don't even get a one personalized video. It's like you get someone of chat support or something. Yeah. And I'm like, no, fuck off. Now you get, you get a Loom video. Like I really try to make my time for you. But the only thing is what I always say is I do it on my time. Yeah. I won't go out my way to make free time that I can't do a certain thing that I want to do yeah. because I have to help someone. Yeah. If I want to take a day off, I just don't respond. Yeah. But on the other hand, if I want to work all day, I might reply for you four hours straight and a answer every single question that yeah. you possibly have. Right now, I'm at the point where I get like 60 to 100 questions a day wow. for individual people. Yeah. And I still go over it almost every day. But as an example, when I fly, I don't. It's yeah. like if I fly and then it hits Saturday, Sunday, I won't be there for four days maybe. Yeah. That, that, that happens. But I have to be able to fly whenever I want to fly, yeah, yeah. not be dependent on the schedule because other people want to get advice. True, yeah. And that's where I drag my own line. It's like, that's what I do more than that I don't. So that's also the key with like your course that you're helping those people like on a personal, like personally, you're chatting yeah. with them through, through WhatsApp or? So for the Dutch community, it's through WhatsApp because yeah. we don't really use Discord or other services or like Telegram. 
Uh, but for the English one, it's just a Discord server. Okay. But then it's very well set up where we have like a Loom library. So people click on the Loom section and then it's like all the update videos. Because yeah. I don't always have the time to go to such a nice studio to make a proper yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. Or I might not even be in Bali to make such videos. Yeah. So I'll make a Loom video and I'll post that into that chat. Yeah. Where it's like you can just look up on the issue or like if there's any advice points or any certain points that we want to address. It's just one big library and you just yeah. click on any video you want. As an example, we had like the quiz niche that we dominated. We dominated the quiz niche like yeah. ridiculously fucking hard. Uh, where I think we had 10 to 15 students being profitable in this niche, like all oh. doing 3K plus. Yeah. It's like it was insane. Yeah. And then a lot of the channels got demonetized. So we're like, hey, for everyone who wants to start out, don't do this niche. Be careful. Mm-hmm. The thing is, I can't go to the studio and make a specific video about it. So I'll make a Loom video. And I'll put that up in the chat. And it's mm-hmm. like, hey, listen, don't do that anymore. Yeah. And if people don't watch it, that's not my problem. Yeah, but then sure. if now in the Discord server, I can have that video still be there and be like problem, double point. And then it's like problem quiz videos. And then it's like the video and it's like solution. Now we get a lot of channels remonetized again by yeah. making good counter uh, videos. That worked really well. And that's now pulling a lot of money for a lot of creators. Yeah. And it's like we bring that solution also to them. We're like, okay, this is an issue now how do we bring the solution yeah. and that helps yeah that's really valuable so you're telling the people what not to do and exactly. how to like do it the right way in order for them to to change and to start making money again or to exactly and yeah. that, that's my goal yeah it also sounds like you're like this friend you can just send a message on whatsapp like the friend that knows a lot about cash cow and you just help those people like through whatsapp that's really yeah yeah definitely and i'm like um i just want to help as many people as possible but the thing is i'm not just always there like i still run my own youtube company yeah so i still have to p- p- build time for that yeah, like yeah. i don't always have time to really sit down and go over everything and sometimes i just also don't want to sometimes like my mind is youtube 24 yeah. 7 sometimes you just want to endlessly scroll through tiktok or shorts yeah. and don't bother with anyone Th- that happens as well like today i woke up i had a huge headache we're still yeah. doing this podcast yeah. but i don't think i'm gonna do anything today like yeah. after this i'm just gonna sit at home and take some take rest. a nice bath take a rest yeah Time probably go yourself. to yeah, yeah. probably go to body factory take a sauna nice yeah. ice bath that's probably what i'll do for today and it's like i'll come back tomorrow yeah and it depends depends what i'm in the mood for and it's like i still do everything myself i could hire someone full time to start helping you but if they say something wrong then i feel guilty because you yeah. paid for a program that's me not someone else and yeah. then you get like not the best quality of support or at least i can't read over it yeah i don't like it that's why you all do it yourself yeah i, I still do the support myself in till the point i can't handle it anymore because yeah. this wednesday we're launching the english version and then we already had the dutch version that's 300 people now and yeah. i just want everyone to be successful that's yeah. that's it I've done it. I've have enough money. I can I can quit any day. I can retire myself, yeah. and I'll be good. Like my villa, if I rent it out, it makes enough money for me to have a comfortable life. Yeah. So I don't need to do anything anymore. I just do it because I find it fun. Yeah. It's for me. I actually get energy from working. Yeah. So I'll relax. My body yeah, relaxes. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, nice. Let me just yeah. work. Now you and just want to like put out the value. All the things you know, you want to teach other people in order for them yeah, to Yeah, and also and then the funny thing is also when I, I really became like this coach. It's like, since I had a coach, it's like, or since I became a coach, I had like seven other coaches. Yeah. It's like, there comes so much more to do with just building a program and shooting it. Yeah. It's like, how do you present yourself? Yeah. How do you talk? Yeah. Do you talk to your thr- Do you talk through your stomach? Yeah. It's like all these small things that are being pointed out and like, and then you get a, like a branding uh, expert in there. Yeah. And it's like, and then you build the funnels and then you build the extra content and then you have to build the advertisement and then you have to understand TikTok ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, <laughs> yeah. uh, Pinterest ads. You have to understand every single piece. Mm-hmm. It's like, you learn so much more. Yeah. And, and this is now really the path that I'm enjoying more. So that's the reason why I rather focus on coaching than I focus on my own personal cash cow. Yeah. And I'm just being honest in that as well. I can imagine that it gives you a lot of energy. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. It makes me happy. Yeah. What is your biggest, the biggest mistake you made and what did you learn from this mistake? Um, probably going to Dubai too fast. Okay. Um, because the thing is, you can't really be in the Netherlands anymore as long as you want to. Yeah. And sometimes I miss my family. I miss having a proper home where I'm just there for four, five, six months not worrying about a thing or like, oh, I have to take another flight or anything. Yeah. So I miss at home feeling sometimes. 
But the good thing is it saves a lot of taxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a difference in the two of them. Is that the main reason why you went to Dubai? Yeah, I went to Dubai purely for taxes. Yeah. And and because of the taxes, I had more money to then travel. And in the meantime, I visited like 28 countries. So mm -hmm. it opened up a lot of doors for me and it yeah. definitely pushed me to the next level. But now I'm at a level like I want to do this coaching stuff. But after this, I'll probably quit. Yeah. Like I won't do more than this. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I ever want to do is like build like a suitcase brand. Yeah. But that's like for end next year. A suitcase brand? Yeah. Like uh, John Olsen has said, like uh, douchebag. Oh, okay. I love that brand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it literally says douchebags, but it's, it's, it sounds so fun. Yeah. But it's actually one of my favorite brands. I have like their backpacks literally over there and I fucking love it. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. So big shout out to John Olsen. If he, if he watches this, <laughs> shoot me off in the Instagram DM. We'll, we'll drive somewhere. It'll be fun. It's a good name. It's, it's again, it's a creative name because you said yeah. douchebag to me. And now I want, to, I want to know what those bags are all about because of the name. Yeah, and that, that's part of branding. And it's like, yeah. I know it's like one of his biggest parts of his company. And it's like, it's insane. Mm. Uh, as how it speaks to an audience, how it's set up. And I'm like, that's interesting. Like, that's the part where I want to be, where people just vlog me doing cool stuff. Yeah. And in the meantime, I have all those businesses running in the background. Yeah. It's like, what, what people always say, you're in the front, but in the back, you make the money. Yeah. In front, you never make money. No. In the back, you make money. Mm. And the same thing with YouTube Cash Cow. Nobody knows me. Yeah. But in, in, in behind the scenes, I'm pulling all the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's, that's the part I like. Is it because now you're, you're also vlogging, right? So now you're in the, with vlogging, you're in the front. So now people... So I, I'm, I'm not a vlogger. I don't vlog yet. Um, I just do like a daily vlog yeah, in, in like Bali sometimes. Yeah. Where people are like very curious. And I know those videos are the best ones that perform on my page. Yeah. So sometimes I just like to make them because I'm like addicted to my aesthetics. So I'm like, yeah. oh, so it's going off. So I'll do another one. Or yeah. like, oh, people have questions about like what are the best places to eat and stuff. So I'll go along through every place. I order like one or two things. Yeah. And sometimes I don't even eat them. And then I'll just bring them with me. <laughs> and I'll just give them to my cleaning lady or to my oh, uh, management. Yeah. And then I'll make a very cool video out of it. And I know that video might do 20,000, 50,000 viewers. Mm. For a Dutch audience, that's huge yeah. on Reels. And that gives me more exposure. And I know that that's the funny part where if that gets 20,000 or 50,000 viewers, that one person might follow me, one person might DM me, and then one person might buy it. Yeah. And then all the money is made back. How do you... Um, because recently YouTube started with the, the whole YouTube shorts thing. Oh, yeah. What's your view on the YouTube shorts? Right now, it's very, very good pr to promote other channels. Yeah. Monetization is weird and difficult. It's just biased on what YouTube wants. Okay. Um, so now copyrighted content is monetized, weird content is monetized, even Family Guy content is monetized again. Um, but overall, in 2023, when they're going to roll out that YouTube revenue share split with yeah. shorts, what is higher than the normal uh, base channels. Yeah. So it's like a 70-30. So they'll probably make, as, expect, as expected from YouTube, 20 times as much money yeah. as it does right now yeah. and that TikTok makes. Yeah. So all the TikTok people will go over to shorts. Everyone's going to be on shorts within now and three months. You th you, but like, do you also use like, T recommend using TikTok for like y y uh, YouTube automation to like send mm. people from TikTok to YouTube? On a separate channel, you can do so, but at your own risk. Yeah. It is a risk, but yeah, we have one guy now has like 50,000 subscribers. He just got another shorts bonus like yesterday, like 550 bucks. Yeah. 100% stolen content from TikTok. Oh, really? And I'm like, that's fucking stupid. Yeah. Like that guy made a whole program money back. He doesn't even, his cash card, his cash card channel is not even doing that well. Yeah. It's just like every month he's like pulling 500 a month from shorts. It's like yeah. funny. Yeah, it's just ridiculously funny. But is that how most people gain like a lot of subscribers and make money with shorts just by stealing the content yeah a lot <laughs> okay. i think i think 90 percent of shorts is just stolen content i don't think almost anything is original yeah, yeah. even motivational pages it's like yes they add text to it and yes it falls on a fair use yeah. but still it's just stolen content yeah true. so yeah defense mm. might might have big opportunities we'll have to see how that goes yeah what do you think that like the future holds for like youtube like, will it stay like this, like the, the, the long form videos or do you think they're going to focus more on shorts now? And it will be both. It'll, it'll switch. The algorithm is switching towards if you watch a short format video, yeah. then YouTube will later on just um, recommend you an eight minute video. Because if it's like creator based, 
So let's say we have one snippet of this and we post it on our channel and we have like, hey, listen, go to the comments and check out the full podcast. Then YouTube might see like, okay, someone watched literally 15 or 15 seconds of this clip. Let's now promote the next part. Let's promote the full podcast. Yeah. If that happens, it'll become uh, very interesting and very good. All right. And even, even for guest card channels, if you have like a top 10 version, you make a top three and the top three goes viral yeah. and people start flocking over to your real video yeah. that's where the big money is right. so it's still going to be different in the two revenue share splits but it'll, it'll make a lot a lot of money mm. i'm very curious how that's going to roll out that will do very well for my company as well yeah and for my media management so that that will make if that rolls out i'll probably go over a quarter million a month i yeah. think because wow. i know how short really works it's doing really well we're doing on all our short channels we're doing i think 80 or 100 million views a month right now yeah so that'll, that'll be interesting to get that additional bonus revenue and starting with a short channel, what do you, what do you recommend? Like uploading one video a day, three, oh, five. six, five a day. Five a day, split it between every two hours. Sometimes you can do ten a day. I even had one guy doing like one every hour. Yeah. But that's a little bit too much in my opinion. And now we have one. We have one channel where we actually do only two shorts per day, and that's actually the channel that performs the best. Yeah. So that's weird. But maybe because it's a different niche, but we still have to test it out. Yeah. And build new channels. So and is it also points. like the videos you're using on those channels also stolen content or like no 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 we, we produce our own content i do nothing anymore that's stolen content yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing i don't want to have the risk to end up in court or anything yeah. it's not worth it for me if you're underage and it's something you want to try something then do it at your own risk but besides that i'm like no i'm not, not touching it anymore it, okay. No, I'm past that point. If I want to get content, I'll just ask permission or have them sign an agreement yeah. or something that at least secures me uh, and my company. Yeah. I just don't want any risk. That's it. Well, I spoke to some people here in Bali that also do cash cow. And when I asked them, like, what, what niche are you in? They are like, mm, I'm not going to tell you. Um, but h how do you, like, what would you say to people when they want to discuss their niche with other people? Do you say, like, keep it for yourself because maybe other people will steal it? Or how? If it's a niche that's not popular, then I say keep it for yourself. Yeah. But if it's a niche that is just generally known, then why the fuck would you care? Yeah. And I always think as well, if people don't want to share their niche, for sure these coaches, it's like, if you don't want to share your niche or your story, then what's really the power? Why yeah. did you succeed? Yeah. If you even did succeed, because I know coaches that sell programs that didn't even do cash cow themselves. Oh, really? Yeah. So, do, okay. So they literally go up to someone that does like cash cow a little bit and it's like, hey, do you want to become a coach? Work in the background. And they work in the background and then France is just another face and it's like she doesn't or he doesn't even know anything about cash cow. And they're selling those courses. And they're selling programs like 2,500, 5,000 a pop. And it's like, I, I, I personally can't do that. No. That's the reason why I share my channels. It's all these satisfying videos. The name has been changed. All these satisfying uh, slime videos. Yeah. If you want to search it, it's not doing well anymore. It's only pulling like 800 views per video. Yeah. But if you go to popular videos or you look at total views, it'll be over 200 million. Multiply that by an average RPM of about five, six dollars. We made a little bit over 1.2 million on the channel in yeah. the last two and a half years. That's so fun. that's my channel. You can search it up. Uh, yeah. I don't care. It's like... Why do you have to be insecure about it? I know that I produce such high quality videos. You can go into that niche. First, you won't get monetized unless you produce high quality videos yourself. So the level of entry, you need to have at least 50,000 bucks to really get into the niche. Yeah. So there's no competition for me. Mm. So I can just openly talk about it. Yeah. We had a pets channel that did really well. That's now also unfortunately has died out. Uh, but that was doing 40 million views a month. That's the channel I showed you uh, a month ago or so. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was doing 40 million a month. That, that made 62,000 last month. Jesus. So that's insane. How, because you said like you need like a 50,000 to, to run this channel. Yeah. But, so if I would start with uh, YouTube automation, now, how much money do, not, do I need? I mean, I can buy a course, but how much money do I need if I want to, if I, I'm not making the videos myself. Yeah. So the thing, what I was now talking about was production videos. Yeah. So it's really having people hired full-time and staff. It's a whole different cost from a cash cow uh, channel. So the proper cash cow channel, your average cost would be about 60 to $65 per video. I say you need to have five videos up front. So that's about $325. That's your upfront cost plus a banner logo at another 25 or 50 bucks. All I care, let's put it wide open. Let's say 400 bucks. Yeah. After that, you need a minimum of two videos a week yeah. times $60 a piece. It's 120, 120 times four is $480 a month. Yeah. 
is what I say is the bare minimum in order to go and have an opportunity at making a full-time income from yeah. YouTube. Once you start being profitable, up that to once every two days. Yeah. So four uploads a week. So it's like about $500 a month for like two videos a week. Yeah. And you just told me about the, the 30, 30 videos rule. Like yeah, the 33 things. video rule. So that would mean that you like need... But like that's it. spread over over time. Yeah, so that's yeah. the difference. But if you would put everything up front, your total cost would be about $2,100. $2,100. That's what I say is a fair amount to take into uh, logos, revisions, yeah. uh, your banner, uh, anything that might need to be updated. Yeah. Uh, another additional script or one video that was just a total disaster, as an example, yeah. um, that just doesn't fit into that area. So I say, let's say two grand. Yeah, exactly. Two K is enough. And then if you know what you're doing and you have, like, if you do the, the, the program mm -hmm. and you teach, like, the people how to, like, set up this, this whole channel, then... It's it's like it's it's an investment that will give you like a bigger return over time. Yeah, for sure. If it's evergreen, if people keep watching consistently to your videos, yeah. it's like digital real estate. Like yeah. you can buy a home, and you can rent it out, and it yeah. brings in money. Or you produce really high videos that I've watched nine months, a year, two, three, four, five years yeah. from now. That still bring in revenue every single day. Yeah. It's also real estate. It's just digitally on a video on YouTube. Yeah, that's the difference. Do you think consistent? Consistency is the biggest problem why people fail in like YouTube animation. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for sure, in the beginning, there was one video that I actually didn't know of. So that's also part where I'm just honest. Okay. It was a video of a YouTuber uh, that was interviewing someone who worked at YouTube, saying that YouTube really cares about what you publish whenever you start your channel. Yeah. So my, vi my thing is already make five videos before starting your channel then produce it every single day. And after that, you can do two times a week. Yeah. The first five videos are key. It's because you show YouTube you're an active user. You want to produce high quality videos, so YouTube will promote it quicker. Yeah. Something I didn't know of as like two, to like two, three weeks ago. Oh, really? I haven't seen that video. No, it's actually someone in the program that sent it to me. I was oh. like, that's interesting. I didn't know. And that's, a, that's also part just me being honest. I literally didn't know that YouTube yeah. was looking at that that way. But you also keep on learning every day. Yeah, definitely. Because that's how I stay on top. Someone teaches me, I make a Loom video about it, and now the whole program knows it. Yeah. And it's only fair. And it's also another thing. We'll have like another like video resources that talks about like the creator economics, like the manager from Mr. Beast that has like a few good snippets about videos and thumbnails and yeah. color contrast. And then we have like a thumbnail guy or like if people want to edit their own videos, I, it's not illegal to link videos, so I can literally have in the resources. Like, I don't teach people how to edit their own videos, yeah. but I can have, like, a guide for Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, iMovie. I can just pull up YouTube links and just use it as, like, a bookmark for yeah. people to go to. Yeah. So that's, that's additional support that you can give, mm. and you'll teach people more stuff about it as well. Exactly, yeah. I can't put it inside my program because that would be copyright, yeah. but I can link to the content. That's, yeah. that's free. Yeah, exactly. It's nothing illegal about it. It's public. It's, it's, it has been publicized. Yeah, and those videos, the people who made those videos. Yeah, you just go to YouTube. Teach. So I'm, yeah. I'm helping them get subscribers and viewers as well. True, yeah. And interested viewers. Yeah. Hmm. So, so that's a good part about this as well. Um, okay, so with YouTube animation, you can make like money uh, from like ads. So you get yeah. like money from the ads. But what are some other ways you can, when you have like a bigger channel, you can use to get like more streams of income, like affiliate or like um, collaborations, what are some ways you're using as well besides YouTube? So, so for YouTube Cash Cow, if you have a really good channel, um, I definitely recommend people take brand deals, but take like very good ones. Like don't take like 95% of your emails that you get, they're shit. Yeah. Um, but like 5% is like NordVPN, ExpressVPN, or yeah. like, um, like ticket sales and that kind of stuff. Those are very good and very well-paid brand deals, and I would say take them any day you can. Yeah. It's just an extra source of revenue. If you pay 60 bucks for a video, or maybe very good cash cow video, and if you're already at that higher level, maybe you pay 100 or $200 per video. If you can get 1500 from a brand deal, you've just paid for six, seven videos. Yeah. Like True. that's an additional revenue source. Same with affiliate stuff. If you have, as an, as an example, like the Amazon Finds and the Amazon Gadgets, it's like, if you talk as in a way, like if you want to set a podcast, this is a very good microphone to use. The audio sounds very good. So I highly recommend you to purchase this one. If you ever want to start your own podcast, if you're curious to where to find it, I put a link in the description and that's where you can find this microphone. And then it's an affiliate link. And, and then it's an affiliate link and people are like, oh, that's an interesting, I want to start my own podcast. Let me search up what this mic is, how much it costs. People yeah. click on it. Good thing about Amazon affiliates is that even if you clicked on the link to buy this microphone, then 
maybe you buy a TV or you yeah. buy, I don't know, an Apple product or something, yeah. I'm still getting a commission. It's oh, really? just depends how much, yeah. So it doesn't like matter. Really high. Yeah, but like books just like really high, electronics is really low. But as an example, on this I would might get like 2%, but this is like 200 bucks as an example. 2% is four bucks. Yeah. Let's say out of the thousand people watching this video, there's four people buying it. It's not a lot. But even for a small creator as me, four videos or four people yeah. times four, four bucks a piece is $16. Yeah. That, that pays true. for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that lunch. So, so, so that, that's another source of revenue. Yeah. And it's like, how are you going to slowly but simply implement your own channel? It's the same thing with my personal channel. My goal is eventually to have my personal channel make a minimum of 10K a month. I'm not even monetized at this moment. Well, as an example, I will put the affiliate link of this one <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the YouTube video. Like yeah. th that's, a, that's a nice little add-on for sure because we joked about it. Yeah. And if people want to start it, it's a nice little extra revenue yeah. source. And it's like these small little things that you can do, just implements it. And then of course, in the back end, I have my program that makes the majority of the money. And, but that's just by providing as much value as possible. And I, yeah. I really try to keep up. Uh, up at my game. I flew to Los Angeles just for a meeting yeah. for Vid Summit, learn as much as possible, um, process that information and then pull it into my own program as well for ev everything that I learned. Yeah. And myself, it's like building a series. It's like we could do this like once every three months and like see what the updates are in life, yeah. how someone is feeling, how something is going and where it's heading towards. And then, like, if you do that every three months, people can really start following your journey. It's like Tristan who's sitting behind the camera. He also has his own podcast. Yeah. It's like you can follow this journey. It's like maybe next year if I come back and he's here as well, I might do one with Tristan. It's like yeah. um, then you have another update about your life. And it's yeah. like a good way to follow someone, I think, mm. personally. That's the reason why I love podcasting. Yeah. And how do you... So you, you you said that you get a lot of emails once you like have a oh yeah a bunch subscribers. but how do you filter out because you said NordVPN and ExpressVPN you should go with but how do you filter out well nine, 9 out of 10 won't even have like a professional links like bottom section where it's like okay. uh, my name is Andrika and uh, I work for company X these are the socials of the company yeah. you can reach me at yeah. if that's already not there I don't even bother looking twice no, like okay. that's just where I start already yeah. if the email just looks weird I don't know xqyzzp uh, at gmail.com uh, or at brands influencers yeah. no it's probably not it there's so many scams out there as well that you have to be so careful. If they ask you to send them a WhatsApp message, that's a scam. Put okay. it out the door. Yeah. Doesn't work. Real brands, they will put professional emails. They will let you know. First of all, 95% is fake just because they already don't include your channel URL. Yeah. I own 20 plus channels. So if you're going to send me an email for a brand deal, mm -hmm. which fucking channel are you talking about? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. No. <laughs> like you really have to just send me the channel you're out, you want your placement on and directly send me the information. Send me a Google Drive where it says like, these are the certain ads integrations you can do. We just want you to use your own voice mm -hmm. or like you can add this little part as like the outro. These are like example videos of, of different creators. Then I know you're a real brand deal. Yeah. Then I know, okay, listen, that's real good. Okay, that looks good. Let's sign the agreement. And then you have like a deliverable, you have like six or eight weeks for the video to be produced, made, and they have first have to uh, accept the video. Yeah. So even if it's like your own video, you're not just allowed to post it whenever you want. Yeah. It first has to go over by the brand deal. The brand deal says, okay, listen, we like this video. Yeah. You're allowed to publish it. I was like, here you say something we don't want in the video, please change it. And then you have to go back, redo your system and yeah. adjust it in order for the brand to be happy. Mm. But I don't do a lot of brand deals. I maybe like two, three a year. Two, three a year. Yeah. What's the biggest brand deal you ever... NordVPN. NordVPN. Yeah. And when how, the much, blew how, up. how much was this brand deal? Uh, was six grand for an implementation of one minute. One minute? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good minute. That's, <laughs> that's, good a, minute, that's, yes. a, that's the first time you heard my voice on like a satisfying video. It's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. It's like for... If you want to be secure and watch your favorite Netflix movies, then make sure you use NordVPN because NordVPN doesn't only provide you, like I can almost still do the script yeah, yeah, out of yeah. my head. So, uh, just for one minute, six grand, wow. Yeah. And then there's also minimum time the video has to be online and the video has to be online for like either 72 hours or it's like a month or something yeah. like three months or a year. And that's like, just for one video? Yeah. So, okay. But that was like, when we had the peak in 2019. We had like November 2019 where we were doing like four or five K a day anyways. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll take an implementation. We're getting like one million plus views every single video we posted. Wow. So that was actually undervalued. I should have charged like 20 K. Yeah. 20, yeah. 30K would have been for them, that's, good amount. That's a good, it's a lot of money, for, but for them, it's a good deal. Then. Yeah, if you get a million impressions, yeah. yeah. 
Only thing is my content also was depending on people falling asleep to my content. Oh. So, yeah, because it's satisfying videos with relaxing mm. music, so people fall asleep with it. Yeah. That's the reason why my average view duration is 38 minutes. Yeah. Oh, Our wow. average videos is an hour. Yeah. So there's a big difference in that. Mm. Um, but that, that, that works really well. So I'd take anyone for just take brand deals if you can, but make sure they're good brand deals and make sure you use the product yourself. Yeah. Try say like, even if you don't, if you're uncertain, say like, I want to test your product for a month and then they will do it. Yeah. And if they say, and this is a really good warning for everyone. If they say, download this, never do so. No. It's like a video editor is just a virus that they're trying to send to YouTubers. Uh. Yeah. And I've seen it happen. I've seen people getting hacked because they thought, oh, I got a brand deal for 500 bucks. And like the email didn't even look okay. So they're, they're hacking your YouTube channel? Or? No, they, they put like a rat file. Mm -hmm. Whereas like if you install like that program, it's like a rat and then they can use your computer so they could steal your PayPal. They could steal your bank accounts. Oh, wow. They okay. could steal everything. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why I'm so ridiculously careful with 95% yeah. of all brand deals. I never download anything. No. I say if it's, if it's publicly, then I want to see a website. Yeah. If it's like Final Cut Pro and it's a professional website from Apple, yes, I'll download it. Yeah. But if it's just a <laughs> drive or something that I need to install, absolutely yeah. not. There's not even an option that I click on it. Mm. E even from people I know, I s I'm like, either you send it through WeTransfer or anything, I'll put it through a, a virus scanner. Like, I don't download anything. Yeah. Even PDFs, I'll just double check it if it's secure or not. Mm. What's, what's one of the weirdest things you... you you went through from like starting YouTube animation until now. I mean, you, you met probably met a lot of cool people. You went oh, to a yeah. lot of cool places. What's like one thing that you were like the, the first time you, you, um, you went through like a place or met someone the, the weirdest thing you've ever experienced in your. So, so the weirdest thing or the funniest thing, because the funniest thing ever was a girl that I met here at the gym in body factory. Okay. And I had a talk with her for about an hour or so. Yeah. Then got her Instagram. And literally about three hours later, she's like, hey, listen, this sounds very weird, but I have to shoot content for OnlyFans. Do you want to join? <laughs> literally dead question. I was like, what the fuck is this? Because yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know she had an OnlyFans. Like, she didn't want to talk about it, but she needed someone to shoot content with in Bali. Yeah. I didn't do it, but no. it would be pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like the weird thing that has ever happened to me when traveling. Yeah. Okay. That, was, that was fun. Wow. Mm. What are some um, some guys, some people you look look up to now in the, the YouTube automation space or like in general? So YouTube automation, not really anyone. That's maybe very egoistic to say, yeah. but <laughs> no, I don't look up to anyone. Yeah. Uh, because if you look up to someone, you can't overtake them. Yeah. It's a saying that comes from an anime called Karuka no Basket. It say once you look up to someone, you'll never be able to overtake them. Yeah. So if you don't look at yourself, why look at someone else? Yeah. So let's say this person does like 200k a month. If I wanted to try really hard and I start five, six channels myself, stop my program, stop everything I'm doing and focus on that, I'll overtake them. Because I know that I can do some stuff better than they do even if they're the biggest ones. Yeah. Uh, as an example, Rebound, very nice dude, but even they can do better things. And that's a channel doing 160K to 200K a month. Mm. So yes, I could do that myself, but the thing is I don't want to anymore. Yeah. So do I look up to anyone in the YouTube automation space? No. Do I look up to people in general uh, worldwide? Um, yes, I think that uh, Alex Amonzi has really, really, really good content. I like his content. Um, I like Iman Gatsi. I yeah. think that just how honest he is in his podcasts mm. and how openly he speaks about everything he thinks. I very much respect someone for that. So I've got a lot of respect for that guy. Also, how he does his marketing. Like, if uh, nobody, if you've seen it, like the four video marketing he did, mm -hmm. it's like the piece where he was like, um, I'm going to upload this YouTube series, like four videos explaining you exactly how to go from zero to 10K a month yeah. by his program. It was like little f videos. And then after that, you go into an email funnel. Yeah. And in an email funnel, you get sold up to a product of $1,500. Yeah. And then he had like the screenshot where he did like 600K in a day. Yeah. And I was like, this, this man is fucking nuts. That's insane. Yeah. Half a mil in a day. Yeah. And the second day was half a mil again. Yeah. It's like this dude just made 1.1 1 1 million in 48 hours. <laughs> I'm like, I'm doing something wrong. I'm happy if I pull like a 4 or 5K day yeah. with my program. That's like, that's like my best days ever. I had like 4 or 5 days where I pulled over 4K a day. And I was like... This dude is pulling half a meal a yeah, day, like yeah. <laughs> just another day. And I'm like, fuck that, man. That, that, that's insane. So I got mad respect for him as well. 
Uh, anyone else I really look up to? Not really. There's a lot of people that I found very interesting and very clever. My good friend Thomas, he helps for the English uh, stuff of the program as well. Yeah. He's now doing the websites, building up and building everything. It's not that I look up to him. It's more that like I think he is one of the most clever people ever. He knows a little bit of everything. Yeah. Like he, you want him to build websites, he can do it. If you want him to do advertisement, he can do it. He can do everything, and that's very interesting. He has built his own very uh, successful uh, brand. Not allowed to say it, but very, uh, very successful. It's like this dude does everything, yeah. and I'm like, that's such a good person as an asset. I pay him like seventy bucks an hour. Yeah, and I think it's worth it. So yeah. shout out to you, Thomas. <laughs> All right. Mm. Okay, Warner. Thank you for being here. And I'm um, willing to answer all these questions. No worries. It's a pleasure. I, I, I love doing this stuff. All right. I'm obsessed with it. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to say anything to the... Um, let, let's, let's do something fun. Because um, my English program is launching. Yeah. And this won't go online for like the next first one and a half week. Okay. Same thing that I did with the old podcast. When I did my first podcast after in Dutch with yeah. Lotgenoten. So what I'm going to do is for the first two people that comment down their Instagram below. All right. I will give away my English program for free, but it's only the first two people. So if you already see two comments, you can still leave a comment, but you won't win anything. <laughs> Just <laughs> saying <comment>. that. <laughs> Just saying that. So the first two people that watch the entire podcast and listen to the whole thing yeah. and put down below their Instagram, yeah. congratulations, you got the program for free. Okay, guys, go comment. First two comments will win the course for free. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Nice.